Last year, the cigarette company Philip Morris sold 850 billion cigarettes. Now, in his first ever broadcast interview, the boss of the company has told us that he wants to get that figure down to zero. He wants Philip Morris to stop selling cigarettes. The company is launching today something called ICOS, which they claim is a revolutionary heat, heated tobacco product. So unlike vaping, in which the nicotine hit is contained in water vapour, the Philip Morris product heats actual tobacco so that you get the hit of the nicotine, also the aroma of the tobacco, but they claim not the poison of cigarettes. We'll discuss that claim and indeed the future of cigarettes and smoking uh, in just a moment. But first, Philip Morris's chief executive, Andre Kalazopoulos, has been talking to Dominic O'Connell. These products hold very great promise, obviously for consumers, if we manage to convince them to switch to these products, but also for public health and eventually for our company. What about, have you done any studies of its addictive properties? Is it more or less addictive than conventional tobacco? Well, the addictiveness of the pharmacokinetics of the product, to be a bit more technical here, are similar to cigarettes. And that's important, I think, for the satisfaction of consumers, because today we have smokers. And as we've seen with electronic cigarettes, although they have a very large reduction in toxicity, even slightly higher than ICOS has, the adoption is rather limited. Of all the people that have tried electronic cigarettes, only 20% approximately are full converted users. Would you like to be out of the traditional cigarette game altogether? Eventually we will, and that's clearly the objective of the company. I think we're transforming our company to achieve this. We're moving very massively our resources and focus of the organization from our existing traditional business to the new one. So as far as we are concerned, we will do everything we can to accelerate the switching of consumers to this product. Now, we're not alone in this journey. I think consumers need to be convinced. That's an important factor, obviously. And also regulators can play a role. Mm, that was Andre Kalanzopoulos of uh, Philip Morris talking to Dominic O'Connell. Fraser Cropper is Managing Director of the e-cigarette manufacturer Totally Wicked and is in our radio car. And Professor John Britton is Director of the UK Centre for Tobacco and Alcohol Studies at the University of Nottingham and is on the line. Morning to you both. Good morning. Um, Good morning. Professor Britton, first of all, what do you make of, of what you just heard? Um, I think that uh, when he says that it's their aim to get out of the, the cigarette market, what he actually means is that at some point they'll have to. Uh, tobacco sales are starting to fall around the world, and certainly in, in more developed countries, people are quitting quickly, and f uptake of smoking is much less than it was several decades ago. So this is a dying market, quite literally, for those who are smoking, and certainly in terms of long-term projections of sales. So I think what Philip Morris are doing are trying to hedge against that by come up with, coming up with products that smokers will use as an alternative and, and hopefully continue to buy. And Fraser Cropper, what do you make of this product that they've come up with? I think it, uh, in part, is a response to the competitive environment that has emerged in the past six or seven years where uh, smokers are now able to find alternatives uh, which satisfy their needs but have significantly lower risks. So it's very, very much on that profile. But what, what, it, what, he seems, sorry to interrupt, what he seems to be suggesting is that what they've come up with, because it involves heating the tobacco... Um, and you still get addicted, as he was perfectly open to say, that, that actually that is, in a sense, a superior product to the kind of vaping things that we see at the moment because it's something that people are going to enjoy more. Well, I, I dispute a couple of those assertions. Firstly, that uh, heat not burn is safer than vaping. I think if you look at the spectral points of tobacco, heat not burn and vaping, you get that hierarchy. Uh, vaping is patently much safer than smoking and from what I know of the research still significantly safer than heat not burn products. We still have some low temperature toxins which are still volatile in the product that they sell. Uh, so we need a lot more work to be done to understand where they sit on that spectrum. And I think also part of what vaping does is provide a much greater satisfaction to smokers needs through the range of variables it can control. Temperature, nicotine con content, flavour and a whole range of other sensory inputs that vaping does connect to the smoking and indeed heat not burn products will not be able to either. Professor uh, Britton, what's your view of the difference between ICOS as this product is going to be called and, and vaping as we know it? Well the, the problem with ICOS at the moment is that the only information we have on its on its performance comes from Philip Morris and we know there's a, a history of decades of 
of, of failure to disclose facts about tobacco products. So it, it's not reliable information. However, on the face of it, I entirely agree. It looks as if these products will be much less uh, hazardous than combusted tobacco, conventional cigarettes, but probably more hazardous than electronic cigarettes. So we have a spectrum of risk of nicotine products from using medicinal nicotine through to burnt tobacco. And any smoker listening to this should try and nudge themselves along that spectrum towards completely quitting. So in many ways, these products may be a helpful step, but we just don't know anything about, enough about them at this stage uh, from reliable sources to be able to say where they fit. Do you sense, Fraser Cropper, s- s- someone who... Uh, m- market supplies e-cigarettes that you are getting enough help as it were from governments from the authorities generally from people who talk about these things that 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 does push people in the direction of going away from cigarettes towards your product no not at all i think when you listen to the interview in full you'll hear the chief executive talk about the low take-up of vaping it's been remarkable 2.5 million people in the uk now vape who used to previously smoke And that is against a really strong and militating backdrop of misinformation and poor communication that we've seen in the past three years. The numbers of people who believe that vaping is more dangerous than smoking has increased year on year since 2013 because of that information, because of that poor connection of fact into into smokers who are able then to make a decision based upon fact rather than poor media or misinformation campaigns. So I think if we did have a clearer understanding of what vaping is, a much more joined up approach from government, then we will see a rapid transition of smokers into the lowest harm product on that spectrum that, that the professor talks to. Do you agree, Professor? Because I mean, we have seen, we've seen attempts, haven't we, in, in Wales to, to, to ban it, ban it in public. Certainly you, you can't vape in, in many closed spaces, public closed spaces. I mean, we've got to change our minds on how we approach non-smoking smoking, if I put it like that. Yeah, I think we have to come to terms with the fact that there are about 9 million people in the UK who are addicted to nicotine. And at the moment, our regulatory system continues to encourage them to use the most dangerous product to feed that addiction. And the more people we can, can push towards less hazardous products, the better. And I think I, I entirely agree that the messaging from my profession, as, as well as from elsewhere in the media, uh, has been less than adequate at times. Professor John Britton and Fraser Cropper as well. Thanks, both.